How do you respond and accept his feelings when he says that he's very happy, excited, angry? So this different feeling. If he's very happy, we say, I'm happy for you, I'm happy for you. So good to see you happy and excited. He is excited about something good. That's great. I'm excited about it too. That I'm ex excited that you're excited about it. Someone is angry. Now then we don't have to show anger. Then we'll say, oh, I know you feel angry now. You think it's unfair, so you feel angry now. I understand that in your situation you feel angry or sad. Oh, I know you feel sad. You feel uh, people don't like you, so you feel sad. Um, so I, I know it's, it's difficult for you. You don't feel accepted by people. And hurts. So someone has hurt you and you feel hurt inside. You feel no one cares about you. You think no one cares about you, so you feel uh, lonely. You feel left out, bored. Many children say, I'm bored, I'm bored. And then uh, instead of teaching, we can say, oh, I know you're bored now. And uh, you're bored that you have nothing to do now. And let the person talk and uh, to tell why he's bored and what can be done. And afraid. So someone is afraid of something. We don't just tell him not to be afraid, but we say, Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're afraid of that. You're afraid of darkness. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. And can you tell me more about it, that you're afraid of darkness? What happened when you see darkness? What do you, how do you feel and what do you think? What do you think of when you see darkness? Or ashamed. I'm sorry that you feel ashamed and ashamed of yourself. And so someone might have said something to you uh, and then you feel ashamed of yourself. I'm sorry to hear that. So we want to accept the feeling and then we want to explore his feelings. Okay, Empathy and support. What are primary empathy and advanced level uh, of empathy? Primary empathy is saying, I know that uh, you, know, we, you just feel s sad I feel your feelings, you are feeling sad. So it's it, empathetic with his feeling that he has expressed. That's primary empathy. Advanced level of empathy is feeling how that feeling affects him. If someone says, my husband makes me feel very desperate, then we'll say, it looks like the husband makes you feel makes you lose hope in your marriage, makes you feel sad about the relationship or sad about yourself or sad about him. So it, how it affects the whole person, the deeper influence, it's not just the superficial, it's not just the feeling that he has said, but how it affects internally, uh, affects more his self-image, his ability, makes him feel disappointed. For instance, a pastor who has not been doing very well in his ministry, when he talks about his difficulty, we can say, I heard that you might feel incapable of ministry, that you feel disappointed in yourself, in your ministry, right? Is that true? So we can find out is, if that is true, to accept the person uh, that it affects his deeper feeling, affect his uh, self-image. Okay, number two, what is the purpose of empathy? Purpose of empathy is to let the person know that he's supported, we care about him, we know his feelings, we care about his feelings. And number three, what mentality do we need to have before we can have empathy? The mentality necessary is we respect people, we honor people, we think they are important and we want to feel the feelings before we can have empathy. We care about the feelings and accept the feelings. Explain this, accept his feeling. That means we accept that in this situation he will feel very unhappy, he might feel angry. Verbalize his feeling. Verbalize means say it out for him. Oh, are you feeling angry now? Do you feel frustrated now? Do you feel unhappy with him now? Empathize his feeling. 
oh, I know it's not easy to have this feeling now. I know it makes it difficult for you. And not to despise his feelings. Not to think that, wow, if I were him, I would not feel like this. We won't say this, but we'll say, yes, I know in your situation, it's easy for you to feel that way. Appreciate that he has shared. So we'll say, thank you for sharing with me. I Thank you for trusting me and telling me your feelings. Uh, I'm sorry to hear this. So thank you. Appreciate that he has shared. And give support to the counselee. Give support means... Oh, I thank you that you tell me, and, and uh, there's hope. There's hope in this situation. There's, there are ways to overcome the problem. There are ways that you can be strong and, and uh, have more joy and strength to overcome this problem, to face this problem. So we give them support and strength. God is helping you. God will help you. Okay, number five, how can we empathize if someone says he feels sad, angry? So if someone says... I feel sad, then we say, oh, I'm sorry, you feel sad. I feel sad for you too. I know it's not easy to feel sad or angry or fear. So, so these different feelings, um, not disappointed, or you're disappointed in yourself or disappointed in someone. You feel very unhappy that he has failed you, so you feel dis disappointed. And I, in, my sit in your situation, I would feel the uh, disappointment too. I would feel disappointed because this person has done this. So we empathize with the person. Okay, so, uh, we move on now. Guide the counselor to analyze the situation and problem. So we want to guide him to analyze the situation and problem before we find a solution. What questions can we ask to guide the counselor to analyze the situation and problem? So what questions can we ask? So we can say, where do you think it goes wrong? Uh, who has done wrong? Has he done wrong? And do you think you have done wrong also? So what caused your marriage to have so much problem? What caused you to lose faith in God? So what has happened? So we can ask, find out, okay? And... Uh, Please explain this root problem. So this is a root problem, self-image. Self-image means someone, he doesn't like himself, he thinks he's useless, he thinks he can do nothing. Now when people have low self-image, then he'll have all kinds of problems. He'll have problems relating to people. We always think people are accusing me, people don't like me, what I do is nothing, is useless. So people who have low self-image always have the tendency to, uh, to despise himself, to think it's useless to do certain things. There is no way to change. So people with low self-image, um, the problem, sometimes it's not the problem they're facing, is that they have low self-image, so they have no strength to face a problem. They have no confidence to face a problem. Okay, and then the root problem, relationship, that because he doesn't like people, he doesn't want to respect his spouse. He doesn't treasure his family members. He doesn't treat them with respect. He doesn't respect the church members. So this is a relationship problem, that he has problem relating to people. He has problem accepting people and building relationship with people. Sensitivity. Some people are very sensitive. They, whatever People say they get angry easily, they get unhappy easily. When someone says, uh, you didn't do it, uh, then immediately they'll say, you're accusing me, you're accusing me, I'm very unhappy. So whenever people say, even when people say very gently, say, uh, what has happened? Then he'll say, you're accusing me, you're saying I did wrong. That's sensitivity, oversensitivity. And past hurts. Past hurts in the past, they have been hurt by someone and they remember these hurts and they let these hurts sink in the heart. What happened is that whenever anyone says anything to him, he always imagines the person is trying to hurt him. So he's easily hurt when he has unresolved hurt feelings. So we want to resolve the hurt feeling and say, 
God loves me, God cares about me, all the things in the past doesn't matter anymore, I can let go, I have tr I have, I'm important, God has a wonderful plan in my life, I can improve, I can overcome this problem so I don't have to continue feel bad. Okay, despise that some people have despised of people, despised of the spouse, so they have problem because they despise people. Some Christian despise the pastors or despise the leaders, so they don't listen to them. Sometimes pastors despise the, the members, that they don't think that, you know, uh, don't accept the difficulties and say they're just lazy, they just don't love God, and, and they don't accept that the members, they don't accept the members emotionally, so the members feel uh, despised by the pastor. The pastor doesn't respect them when he talks with them. Unresolved emotions, so, so when they have anger all life long, always, ang always angry. Whenever it happens, he gets angry. Then these are some root problems. So his response to people or problem is always anger. And then communication problems. Some people cannot communicate. Whenever they, they're not happy, they think the only solution is yell and fight and hit people. So they think that uh, if there is a problem, they, then you have to yell and yell and shout loudly because they don't know how to talk gently. We can talk gently and ask people, what can we do? How can we solve the problem? Now here I'm talking about guide the person to analyze the situation problem. Sometimes this counsel Lee has this problem of low self-image. So every time when someone says something, he cannot accept it and he is hurt. And some people have problem relating to people. He doesn't accept people. He cannot talk with people. So he always has problem of relating to people. And then unrealistic expectation. Some people expect the family member to be better, but they are not good. So they always feel disappointed in them because they expect them to be good, but they are not good. So we, sometimes we have to lower the expectation if these people have not changed for a long time. And controlling. Controlling behavior means someone trying to control the spouse, control church members, control the pastor, control the parents. So we find out if these are some root problems. So we guide the person to think about what are the problems. For instance, um, a woman says, oh, my husband doesn't listen to me, and uh, he doesn't talk with me, he doesn't tell me what he's thinking. And then she thinks all the problem is her husband's. And then we talk to her husband, and then the husband says, she's always nagging, she's always unhappy, she's always complaining. So she has a problem. So each person has a root problem. The husband maybe doesn't care, doesn't listen, doesn't communicate. And the wife is too controlling, is too unhappy, is too emotional. He wants everything done better. He has a high uh, expectation. Okay. Now, step six, guide the counselor to imagine the best scenario for the future. So for counseling, we want to imagine if things get better, how would it affect you? For instance, a couple comes in and they have been yelling and fighting with each other. And then we find out the situation, okay? Before they were, they had a good relationship and now they are fighting and yelling. And then we find out the problem, okay? The husband doesn't care the husband doesn't listen, and the wife is too controlling or too is insecure. She wants more security, so she feels very unhappy. When happy, unhappy when the husband doesn't do what she wants him to do. Now both sides have their, their faults, but we can give them, let them guide them to imagine the best scenario. Tell me how you relate before you get married, Bef when you were dating. How did you relate? Can you imagine that you go back to that situation and you relate, relate to each other like when you were dating, when you first knew each other? So how did you relate? Can you imagine that you go back to that relationship? 
or someone who has no faith in serving God. So imagine that you have faith and you tell people about Jesus and then God is very happy with you. So you really can tell people about Jesus and God is happy with you and God is happy with your life and He'll raise you up. Do you, can you imagine that you have confidence to tell people about Jesus? No matter how many people believe, it doesn't matter. It's how confident you are to tell people about Jesus. If you have the confidence, then you have the potential. Can you imagine? Imagine a scenario that you are courageous to tell people about Jesus. How would it be? How would it be? Would you like that? So we ask them to imagine the best scenario and, and do they like that? Do they want, want to work on it? Okay, number seven, guide the counselee. Now I'm going through the steps of counselling now. Guide the counselee to think of ways to work on the problem. Now, so just now, uh, when we, after we have the empathy and support, responding, listening, and then we have guide the counselee to analyze the situation and the problem, and then guide the counselee to imagine the best scenario, scenario for the future, and guide the counselee to think of ways to work on the problem. So what are some possible ways? So use guidance, ask questions. The reason why we do this is so that people think, and then when they think of something, they are more motivated to follow it. So what are the benefits of asking the counselee to think of ways to work on the problem instead of telling him what to do? Because when we tell them what to do, they might not listen. But if they think of the solution, then they have a stronger motivation to, to work on it. So that's why we want to ask them instead of rushing them, tell them, them what they should do. Unless if someone is ready, they just want us to tell, the, the, tell the opi our opinion. Okay, number two, how can we ask the counselor to think of ways of having more peace? So, how, uh, so, so he wants more peace. So what kind of questions can we ask to guide him to think? Then we can say, ask him, uh, have you been peaceful before? And why were you peaceful at that time? And why did you lose peace now? Do you think you can go back to that past peace now, the peace in the past now? So what can you do? What are some possible ways that you can have the peace back to you? So these are ways that we can ask him. Okay, and then helping himself emotionally. So have you been peaceful before? Have you been joyful before? And what has happened that caused you to be emotional? And uh, can you think of ways that now you can do something that makes you feel more peaceful and happy and joyful? There Are there things that you do that you make yourself more joyful? Uh, does it work? So can you try to do that? So ask the person uh, what he has done or can he imagine? Can you imagine? how you can put down the problems of people and be joyful because God loves you and don't think of how people dislike you. Okay, helping, uh, thinking more positively about the negative person. So how can we think more positive about the negative person? Does, has he treated you nicely at all? Has he helped you at all? Has he done anything good to you at all? Has he said anything good to you at all? Has he made you happy? So if he has done this, so he does have some good points, right? He does have some strength. So do you think uh, gradually, you know, with your help that you love him more, that he can change better? So what can you do? What can you do to make him feel better, to uh, bring out his strength? And, and here is thinking positively about a negative person. So he has done some good to you. Can you think of him more positively? How can you think of him more positively? How can you think of him as a person who is growing in Jesus Christ? He wants to grow. Okay, and then uh, think of ways to build a better relationship with him. So how to build a better relationship with him. So this person has been negative, but he has some strength. So what can you do to make him feel good about his strengths? So we want to guide him, but we have some ideas that if he thinks good about the 
good points of the person, then he has more motivation to treat him nicely. So can you think of some good things of him? And then treat him nicely and make him feel better, and then you can have better communication with him. So what can you say to him? So we ask him questions. And uh, communicating with him. Uh, I just talked about that. So how, in what way can you communicate with him that he would not be so frustrated? So how can you talk to him so that he will listen to you more, that he feels happy about you more? And then encouraging him. So how can you encourage him? Someone who is, who is negative, how can you encourage him? Uh, you, uh, what can you say to him? Uh, does he have some good, good uh, strengths? If he has some strengths, can, what can you say to make him feel good about his strengths? And has he done anything good to you? How can you make him feel happy about that he has done something good to you? Changing him gradually. So has he changed a little bit when you're nice to him? So how can you, how can you change so that he will be changed slowly? He might not change suddenly, but slowly. How can you change him slowly? So what attitude can you change? What way, ways can you talk? How can you talk to him that you can change him gradually? And not being affected by him. How can you not be affected by him that even when he's yelling, that you don't take it seriously, that you can let go, that you can relax? Okay, now um, we can have a short break, right? Six, six. Okay, but we only have half an hour. You can tell me, is it okay we just continue for the half an hour? Now, if you have questions, you can ask the questions and then I can see and then answer the questions. Okay, now we will have half an hour and then we'll break for the lunch. Help the counselee to start to change. So even if we have come, with some, come up with some solutions, some solutions might be how can you treat him nicely, not take, him, not take his words seriously and listen to him and be kind to him and help him, uh, bring him some gifts, help him in some ways to and say some pleasant words to him to make him feel happy. So to guide the person to, to have this waste. So when you go home, can you put it into action? Okay. So how can we ask whether there is our internal and external resistance to, take, to taking action to help handle the problem? So are there resistance to it? So do you are you willing to change? Are you willing to be kind to him? Are you willing to, to talk positively to him? Are you willing to, to accept him? So are there internal resistance? Internal resistance means you don't like it. You don't think it's fair, so you are not happy to change. You're not happy to be nice to him. You, you want to punish him. You don't want to treat him nicely. So uh, is this happening to you? So uh, is there some internal uh, resistance, external, external resistance, maybe some other people that resist or the situation resists. So how can we overcome it? When we know the resistance and we want to find ways to overcome it. Number two, how can we guide the person to have the motivation to change? The motivation is the the, you know, the desire to work on the problem. This is very important. So we want to give people hope. Do you think your marriage will improve? And when your marriage improves, how would it benefit you? How would you feel? How would your ministry be if your spouse is more supportive and you're more supportive of him or her? So can you imagine how it would be like? So uh, do you want to be like that? If it's so good, do you want to be like that? So give him a beautiful scenario do you think is possible so when it improves do you like it and if you like it that would it benefit you and then uh, other motivation just now is the benefit 
So first is God loves you. God really loves you. Now, many people don't really believe that God loves them. They don't really believe that they have hope. They don't really believe that God is helping them. But we want to, first we want to believe that, yes, God is helping me. God is blessing me. God is bringing me ways to solve my problem. So we believe that God is helping us. And then, uh, we are precious. In God's sight, we are precious. And then if we improve, things will go better. And then if we don't improve, things will go worse and the worst will happen to our life. So these are four motivations. First, God loves you. God cares about you. Second, you are precious. And then number three, if you work on a problem, your situation will improve and you'll benefit from it. And number four, if you don't improve, if you don't change, then you suffer from it. The whole marriage or whole ministry will be affected. So are you willing to work on it? Number three, how can we guide him to adjust his thinking and emotions to change his behavior? So guide him to change his thinking. So you've been thinking, there's no hope, he doesn't like me, nobody likes me, I cannot do anything well. So you've been thinking like this. So what are the biblical answers to this thinking? So what does the Bible say about we, our value? Are we precious? Are we important? So do, do you believe that you're important, you're precious? That, that, um, so we can change the thinking about ourselves and change our thinking about people even though they have problems because they are sinners. So we accept that they are sinners. But we accept that, that you know, we believe that if we treat them nicely when they feel loved, there is a hope to change. So the th thinking is, they are not hopeless. If we change, we can change them gradually. So this is adjustment of the thinking. And the ministry, God will give us strength. God will open a way that our ministry will improve. So that's positive thinking. And emotions. Some people, Im when something happens, immediately they will say, Oh, I'm very unhappy, I'm very sad. But instead, we can say, can you believe that even when you are emotional, God is loving you, God wants to bless you, God wants to give you more peace. So when you come to God, you can have uh, more peace and joy when you say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, that you can have more strength and, and more joy. Do you want to live like that? So we guide him to... Uh, how to work on his emotions so that you, he can be more health, uh, peaceful and joyful and to change his behavior. So before you yell at someone, can you change the inside of you and believe that if we yell at someone, it's going to hurt the other person and it's going to hurt you too. So are you willing to change yourself so that you are willing to be nice to him and then it will bless him and bless yourself? So to guide him, do you think you can do it to, to be nice to him? And when there is any anger inside, immediately take care of that instead of going into anger. And then number four, what kind of assignment can we give him? We can give him an assignment, okay, this week try to, try to uh, count 10 blessings every day and be joyful for that and come back and tell me more about it. So we can ask them to write down 10 things. Uh, that we are thankful for. Different things, even very little thing. I thank God I have fingers. Thank God I can talk. Thank God I can listen. Thank God I have Jesus Christ's love. Thank God I have the Holy Spirit moving in my heart. So whatever uh, that we can change uh, the thinking. So whenever you have negative thinking, can you write down and then you replace it with a positive thinking and write down. So this week I've changed from this thinking to this thinking and changed from this feeling to that feeling. Now feeling doesn't change easily, but when, the more we praise God and more we put down problems, we thank God for, the, for His blessings, then we have more joy. When we forget about the problems and we say it doesn't matter if the person treats me badly, it's okay, I let go and I can rejoice in the Lord. Okay, number five, how can we give Him encouragement? Encouragement is say, I have seen your improvement. You will continue to do better. And I, I've seen your willingness to work on it. 
yet and you thought of some ways so you can work on it and you can improve so give him some encouragement saying that you can do it and God can help you so when you pray you have strength and and you will improve 